Dolores Del Rio was the face for what would come to be known as South of the Border films. These were the final talkies before the introduction of the strongly supervised, sanitized, and propagandized Hayes Code era of cinema. Dolores Del Rio was able to expertly navigate audiences through the wild and lawless world of Central and South America, highlighting sex, corruption, fortune, and primal, blind, reckless love. The South of the Border films kicked off with a musical, Girl of the Rio, in 1932. For most of Dolores' career, she played a catch-all for exotic-looking women. In Girl of the Rio, Dolores finally played a Mexican, portraying a dance hall girl. Unfortunately, for Dolores' dance hall girl character, she attracts the attention of a rich Mexican rancher. The caricature of minorities with money and power, which originated during the silent era, was a common stereotype. It portrays a character who is addicted to drinking, lacks manners, is childlike and violent, and has an insatiable appetite for white women. Oh, that's just a little room we have here for the entertainers. But for you, Senor Tristano, the lid's off. Have a little drink with the senor if he wants you to. This harmful stereotype has helped propagate white supremacist propaganda, perpetuating the myth that Mexicans are classless and unfit for society. 200 pesos for one little kid. Senor, please, no. <laughs> 500 pesos. No, please, senor, not now. Senor, go the She's a good kid. Just not quite used to follow as rough as you and me. Leo Carrillo, on the other hand, plays the shining white savior. Handsome, charming, gentle, genuinely interested. Actor Leo Carrillo wrote of his co-star Dolores, She was so captivating in real life, it was the easiest acting job I ever had. When you first come in here for supper, I ask who you are. You did? Uh-huh. And when I hear you, Senor Brayfield's big man, then I'm all excited. Hey, who is this guy you're so crazy about? Dolores' performance overshadowed bad writing, oversaturated racism, and sexism. She brought class, beauty, elegance, and a flair only she could bring to the screen. In the end, Dolores rides off into the sunset with her knight in shining armor, good old Johnny. The film was an astonishing success. Dolores attracted big money from a big client with a massive vision for the future of America. Pan Am, America's private aviation corporation, attempted to monopolize world travel and encouraged the forward-thinking idea of funding a film around the opening of new travel routes to South America. What have these South Americans got below the equator that we haven't? Flying Down to Rio, 1933, was produced by one of Pan Am's former board of directors and aviation hero, Marin C. Cooper. He guaranteed Pan Am's product was featured left, right, and center. Uh-oh. Hold your hats, boys. Here we go again. The Latin type. The film also featured the first ever pairing of Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers and added a new idea of sexy paired with mind-bending dance routines. No body, no body. No, senor. The sultry, seductive, top-billing Dolores Del Rio took full advantage of the last pre-Hayes Code talkies of the 1930s as the first woman in cinema to wear a two-piece bathing suit. I like it sweet, I like it blue, but it makes me do the things I never should do. Famed King Kong special effects artist, Linwood Dunn, created the grand finale dance number, on airplane wings, of course. Again, the production company, RKO, struck gold, as the formula of the young, beautiful, and wealthy jet setting across the world to exotic locations in luxury and safety, is capitalism realized? Isn't this our dance? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, of course. As a matter of fact, I was just looking for you. However, 
Flying down to Rio suffered from the same stereotypical representation of indigenous peoples as overtly sexy, unrefined, and of course, smiling and ready to serve. The casual racism toward brown-skinned minorities is overshadowed, however, by the overbearing misogyny. Like this physically disturbing exchange. To casual jokes of kidnapping. If you're looking for the part of your motor you threw away, you'll find it on top of the piano. Bird of Paradise, 1932, is the most scandalous of Dolores' three South of the Border films because of a scene in which Dolores appears to be swimming in the nude. She was, in fact, wearing a nude-colored G-string. However, even the brief suggested nudity sent shockwaves across a growing conservative landscape in America. You better keep your eye on him, Mac. He's going native. <clears throat> Old Devil Knight got him. Old Tom Tom done stole our Johnny away. Filmed on location in Hawaii, background footage was first shot to lure Hollywood to film on the islands. In the stereotypical racism of the times, indigenous Polynesian peoples were poorly represented and portrayed as the villains. <laughs> The gaslighting storyline is rife with lazy stereotypes, such as the portrayal of sacrificial offerings to volcanoes and the objectification of women as mere gifts or objects rather than as complex human beings, which was all designed to ease American audiences on the mainland for the invasion and eradication of yet another indigenous race. Toxic masculinity takes an odd form, in this scene, in which Dolores is held down and kissed against her will. Astonishingly, just a few scenes later, the perpetrator is now the love interest of Dolores' indigenous character, who thinks pinning someone down against their will is... Western romance? Oh, you want me to struggle with you? Mm -mm, never on occasions like this. Ah, honey. Ah, honey. Oh, well, all right. But remember, I'm only pretending. Once again, even in the face of these racial stereotypes, Dolores' performance brings a positive, classy, and intriguing human being to what was clearly intended to be a one-dimensional other. Go on, sweetheart. I'm listening. Joel McRae plays the dashing white savior, another Johnny who is strong, understanding, and heroic. Joel McRae, however, differentiates himself from the other actors with a deeply empathetic portrayal, rarely seen but certainly welcomed in the story of cinema. The pair is magnetic. Famed director and Dolores' boyfriend, Orson Welles, said of her acting, Del Rio represented the highest erotic ideal with her performance in the film. With a classic white savior ending, Johnny risks his life for the native girl, only to be saved by the cavalry. Hey, what's going on around here? Bird of Paradise was the most successful of the South of the Border films, which were essential to help ease tension between the U.S. and Latinx communities after the Great Depression. Herbert Hoover blamed Mexicans for the Great Depression in a depraved scapegoat tactic similar to admitted white supremacy propagandist Rupert Murdoch and the white nationalist Donald Trump. The illegal, violent, and deplorable deportation of two million Mexican-Americans sent shockwaves through Latin America. The South of the Border films, along with others, like Border Town in 1935, was a Hollywood-level attempt to ease those tensions. As a backlash to the success of the global South of the Border films, the Hayes Code attempted to return American audiences' attention back to traditional domestic stories, distracting the U.S. population with a watered-down, all-white, wholesome propaganda entertainment, intentionally ignoring the rise of European white supremacists, such as the Nazi party. Dolores will fall out of popular favor by the early 1940s, only to be reborn once again. <laughs>